uh, my name is Maisa Martin and I'm an Emerita Professor of Finnish as a second language at the University of Jyväskylä. My own teaching experience comes from teaching academic people, uh, but uh, when Taina Tammelin Laine, who is a member of this project, uh, became interested in writing a doctoral dissertation on uh, learning Finnish by people who have no previous education, who are non-literate, I became involved uh, with this aspect of learning Finnish. Uh, and because Taina is in this project to provide the theoretical knowledge in this area, uh, I will concentrate here on what I've learned from the volunteer work which I have been doing since I retired a couple of years ago. Uh, in US there is a, a multicultural center where people can come, anybody can just walk in and get involved with activities there or suggest and conduct activities there. And there, three mornings each week, we have a group for people who want to learn Finnish and who are not currently uh, taking a sort of official language course or anything else. Uh, originally mainly housewives, but there are a lot of other people too. Uh, it is a very non-systematic way of learning because each time we have a different set of volunteers and different set of learners there. So when I go there, I never know what I'll be doing. Um, but if you start from the usage-based um, theories of language learning, that's not really an issue because whatever you hear there is something that you can use as material for learning uh, more Finnish. We also have a group there that um, works by repeating uh, sentences. It is intended for very beginners and they take a topic each week and then learn by repeating not with no reading or writing. Uh, a few observance, uh, observations uh, about what I've learned there. I think that one issue is that people who have never gone to school lack the learning skills which people with some kind of education usually have. And that uh, is not only about learning but about life in general, that it reflects on many areas of life. Uh, many people find it very hard to come to a certain place at a certain time or keep their papers in order and things like that. So I think it's quite important that there are sort of uh, full-time courses for people so that they also learn to study in a systematic way. But in this um, very non-systematic uh, way of learning, it is very important that there is some kind of mutuality there. Uh, many of these learners find it difficult to um, use a textbook because they cannot quite imagine the people that are acting in the textbooks while they find it much easier to talk about themselves and their own life and I think that in these contexts it's important to be to have a sort of mutuality there that if I ask them a lot of questions I also offer information about myself and also learning a few words of the language uh, of the learner is important because that gives them the opportunity to be the uh, a more knowledgeable person in that interaction. Most of the uh, low educated or non-literate learners are women and for them family is the center of their life. They come with their children and often the children take a great deal of their time even in the learning situation because even if we have somebody there to look after the children, the children want to be with their mother. and. Uh, Many of them also have a sick or disabled family member at home because quite often the refugee status was granted for that reason. Or they have relatives back home who call them on Skype all the time and, and are crying there saying that I want to come with you and, and, and you know that type of things. So it's very difficult for many of these people to concentrate on, on studying. So I think the key words for uh, teaching Finnish to this group is that you have to be very flexible and very uh, teaching has to be very indi individually based. That's of course very difficult in classroom situations where you have large groups. But in this type of volunteer work we often manage to work with one or two or three people at a time. And I think that 
in that way it is quite important that this sort of opportunities for learning exist also, not only the official language courses.